In this series, I'm going to discuss how to install six versions of Ubuntu on one external drive. I'm doing this to make some demonstration videos, but you could do the same thing to try the versions for yourself to see which one you prefer. Part 1 covers partitioning. I'm using gparted, the Linux partition editor, which I have installed on my internal copy of Linux. If you're running Windows, you won't be able to do this from Windows, but you can get a gparted disk, or you can use the copy of gparted on your installation disk. I'm using a one terabyte removable drive. You don't need that much space. I would allow at least 20 gigabytes per partition and more if you want to add software and data. I'm going to open gparted, enter my password, and click on Authenticate. When gparted opens, it shows my internal drive. I'm going to select the external drive. There's something on it. I'm going to get rid of it by selecting the locked partition, then clicking on Partition Unmount. This takes a while. Now I'm going to clear the entire device by creating a partition table. Warning, this will erase all data on the entire disk. Apply. Now all of the space on the disk is unallocated. I'm going to click on Partition New. I'm going to make it a Linux swap partition and uh, 6 gigabytes, which is 6,144 megabytes. And then click on Add. Now I'm going to make another new partition, partition new. This is going to be a primary partition with an ext4 file system. I want to divide the remaining space into six equal segments, 947,000 725 megabytes divided by 6 equals approximately 158,000 megabytes per partition. I'm going to click on Add. Then create another new partition, also a primary partition formatted ext4 with 158,000 megabytes. Click on Add. I can only have four physical partitions, so this one has to be an extended partition. It's going to use the rest of the space on the drive. 
everything from here on is going to be a logical partition inside the extended partition. Partition new. I'm going to make it the same size and click on add. Now I'm going to make another Same size, logical partition, file system, ext4. And another. Now the remaining space is a little bit less, but it's almost the same. So I'm going to give this last partition the rest of the space. Click on Add. Now all of these operations are pending, so I'm going to click on Apply All Operations. Are you sure? Yes, Apply. This takes a while. I'm going to click on Details to follow the progress. It's almost finished. All right, that's done. So I can close this window. It takes a minute for this list to appear. Now I have one swap partition and six partitions for installing Linux. I'm going to check my internal drive and it appears that that's been untouched by anything I've done. So now I can close Gparted. Now to show you why you need Gparted or some other Linux partition editor, this is the view of the disk I just partitioned from the Windows 10 Disk Management Utility. If you notice, it has most of the partitions. It has the swap partition and it has these two primary partitions. It doesn't show the extended partition. And then there's a serious mistake. It shows these last four partitions as primary partitions, when in fact they're logical partitions. Furthermore, it doesn't describe the Linux file systems in any of these partitions. It's simply incapable of handling them. Be sure to watch part two to see the actual installation. This is XRAM Tech. Thanks for watching.